All right, guys, welcome to the interview with two WNBA Pro All-Stars here, some young All-Star athletes. We have Mr. Tyler Annette and we have Basha Annette. They are from Ontario, and they were last year's Montreal Eastern Championship winners in both men's physique and fit body, later going to uh, pro shows, the WNBA Pro shows of the World Championships. Rabasha actually won her Fit Body Pro card at the World Championship, which actually is the toughest place to get her pro to get your pro card because of the competition. And Mr. Tyler got second in men's physique pro division as well as winning the pro men's physique at the Monster Mash a week before. So we have two young athletes here. Actually, before we start, guys, how old are you both? I'm 22. 26. Awesome. So we got athletes that are in their 20s who are pros, natural athletes, make that very clear. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go over some questions and really learn more deeply into what you guys do, your life, your story, your training, nutrition, your mindset and psychology, and just have fun with this process, guys. And we're going to have questions that are going to be happening on the right-hand side of your screen. I see some from people already. Uh, coming in. So feel free to ask Tyler and Basha some questions, guys, as we're going along. So the first question is, the Annettes are pretty famous and well-known, especially your mom and your dad, Dean and Bridget, and uh, they raised some pretty uh, great kids. Actually, do you have one more sibling, by the way? Uh, we have two more siblings. Two siblings. Okay, there's four kids. Okay, great. So, and, but you two are the only ones that do the weight training, correct? For right now. Um, yeah, right now. Actually, one of them is actually trying to get get into it, more into it. And I think she might do bikini. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So there you got men's physique, potentially bodybuilding with you, Tyler, fairly soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Bosch is in fit body. And you also do figure as well, Bosch, or more fit body right now focused? I've retired my uh, figure crown. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. I'm done. It's over. No more. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, tell us kind of between the two of you, tell us how it, how life is in the home of living with four athletes competing at the same time. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> it's definitely not the greatest household to be in when we're in training, but, um, you know, when we get to the show and we, we're, we're pretty much going on stage, that's when, you know, everything comes together. We're all happy. We're happy we did the process, but it's definitely it gets real hard in the household. I, I mean, she she can give you more experiences than I can because um, I mean, it's just a little harder. But um, okay, so first of all, <laughs> for like the last eight months, uh, eight weeks of prep, we basically hate each other. Um, I don't know if Tyler told you. But, well, yes, he did. He he mentioned the other day we all have levels in the house that we go to to be alone. So we'll go to the gym and we smile because I mean, you can't be mean to people. They don't tell you to do this, right? So we'll hate each other, but we're at the gym smiling and we get home and we all section off after we eat. <laughs> <laughs> and moments before we go on stage, we're like, oh my God, I love you so much. You're amazing. You look great. Go kill it. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely hard. <laughs> How about training together? Do the four of you guys train together on a workout? Uh, could you repeat that again? I think you cut out a little bit. No problem. Do the four of you do the four of you train? Have you guys trained all together in one workout? Oh yeah, there's been a lot of workouts where we've done that. I mean, uh, I think I mentioned you know on our Sundays we always do leg day, and I mean when me and my dad go and do you know legs, we're going plate for plate every time, rep for rep, and <laughs> body each other every every set. So, you know, it, it, it gets kind of competitive, definitely, because um, we, you know, we want to outlift each other, too. You know, the, the truth is, my dad is, you know, he's an old school bodybuilder. He's been around forever, and Tyler's the new cat coming up, and he's giving him a go, a go for his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's a little competitive between you and your dad, eh? Oh, it definitely <laughs> does. It, it, we go plate for plate, rep for rep, and I mean, I like it. It's fun. And it definitely pushes us to, to get better, but uh, which, is, which is really good for me. I always have a, a gym partner if I need one when I'm home. That's awesome. So right now, do you guys train together, alone, partners? How, how does that look like right now? Well, 
since I'm away at school, I, I usually go by myself. Um, it's just usually it's a little easier because the gym's so packed. I like get the school I go mm -hmm. by myself, and and then I, I don't have to worry about anybody else, you know, not showing up or not wanting to go. It's just easier to worry about yourself and do that, and you know, ask for a spot in the gym here and there. But um, I mean, it depends on the workout. If I want somebody to be there, then I'll you know I'll ask somebody. But right now, I usually by myself. Okay. Okay. How about you, Basha? What about you? Are, what, are you training by yourself? Or are you training like, how does your schedule look like? Um, right now I'm in London. So I train here um, by myself. Usually my boyfriend comes sometimes. <laughs> okay. Most of it myself. Like if I'm at home during prep, I like to spend a lot of my time at home, like when I'm getting ready for a show, because yeah. even though it's not the funnest place to be all the time. It's just everyone's going to the same thing. So it's nice to have like, you know, that little support system. Okay, so I have a question for you, Bosh, because, um, uh, you know, you got some muscles on you. You're strong, girl. You're a strong gal. So how does your boyfriend take that? Like, uh, do you lift more than him? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, um, no. <laughs> um, he really, really likes it. Um, he always tells me like we're, we're in the gym together and I'm, I get lazy for, cause I'm human. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do my last set. He's like, but I thought you were a pro. Like, you know, I thought you were a pro and I'm like, okay, let me, you know what? Let me keep going. So he motivates me a lot. <laughs> That's awesome. Tyler, do you have, do you have a girlfriend? Me? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. How does she take things with you? Like, you know, uh, your bodybuilding and all that it stuff. It took her a little bit to, you know, understand the actual process and you know, how we feel and, and whatnot. But right now she's at the point where she, she understands what we're going through and whatnot. So she doesn't push me to do too, too much if I don't want to. So it's always good. Love it. Awesome. So what's down the pipe for you two? Because do you, t do you guys typically always do the same shows? Mm -hmm. uh, we're crazy like that, so we try to do at least one show together a year, mm -hmm. and that's, I guess, our ritual is to do the Worlds every year. Um, I know Tyler and I want to do um, more shows this year, like, you know, just get our feet a bit wet before we do the big one. Um, I don't know, Tyler, what are you thinking? I'll probably do one uh, right before the Worlds, uh, I mean, maybe a month before, a month and a half, uh, if there's one around that point to... You know, kind of harden up and, and do a show to get ready. So that will probably be my plan. Oh, well, that's my plan too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. The official blab has you both competing there together. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's great. So typically now, do you guys always compete? Like from now on in, is your goal to compete at least once a year minimum, like for the next five, six years? Yeah, I would definitely like to do at least one show to, you know, just get, just keep doing it and, getting better at the process and, and, and learning and learning more and more. So it, it's always good for me to, to do it. And I enjoy it too. So like, I mean, I was used to doing sports my whole life and whatnot. So it was, it was nice for me to actually get into bodybuilding because it gives me, you know, something to actually look forward to and it gives me some more goals. So. Yeah. Awesome. So I want to ask some other funky, you know, fun, fun questions I'll, I'll ask for you guys. So at the household, you know, what's some, like, one of your biggest challenges that you guys have to deal with, you know, the four of you prepping, name, name a, you know, give us a little quick story about what's, what, maybe one of your biggest challenges of, of dealing, you know, the four of you prepping, dieting, maybe the cook, cooking was off, or someone burnt their food, I don't know, um, you know, something funny. I, every day is like that, like, it's hard to point, you know, Tyler, do you have a specific time? Well, one thing that kind of, a, you know, kind of annoys me is... When somebody wakes up and you know they're about to go on the treadmill downstairs, oh. and you're trying to keep them downstairs to actually get the treadmill or wake up before them so you can get the treadmill so you don't have to go all the way to the gym and do that. But that was kind of one. And uh, it kind of sucks when you come home from work and there's, you know, there's no food or, or whatnot. And you're just like, oh, my God, you're just so mad. Just no, for no reason. <laughs> There'll be times, and I'll be honest, where I've, I've heard Tyler wake up, and I'll be downstairs having a coffee, and I'm like, you know what? He'll be on this treadmill for 45 minutes. Let me jump on before he gets down here. Yeah. <laughs> and that usually forces me to go to the gym, but, you know, yeah. you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. What time do you guys wake up in the morning for your training or your, or your cardio at? Well, for me, it, it depended on when I was working, because I was working pretty much every day. 
I've been, uh, you know, up until my shows. So if I worked uh, later on in the day, I would usually wake up at, you know, eight or nine to, to do cardio or, or um, cardio and abs. I usually do those two together. And then uh, I'll come home and then I'll go back to the gym before I have work again. But if I work, you know, nine to, or like 10 to three or four, Mm -hmm. then I would actually go to the gym after and then maybe do a little bit of uh, cardio before. Awesome. So as far as like, um, I guess when it comes to your training in general and how you train and some of your strategies or philosophies, do you guys have different styles? How do you train? What does it look like for both of you? Our trainer is Pauline Nelson for everyone that doesn't know her. Um, <laughs> she's an amazing trainer. Um, we all train like, I want to say like bodybuilders. Like I've never trained so hard for a show in my life until I met her. It's, it's a lot of like um, high reps, high reps, high, re high, re high rep stuff. So Tata, what do you, what do you think? Well, I mean, right now we, we do lower reps. So we're doing a, we're lifting a little more weight, but Typically, I'll start from, you know, 20 reps and go all the way down to six or eight, uh, mm -hmm. depending on how I'm feeling. I mean, if I'm not feeling good, my joints aren't feeling good, I'll, I'll probably just rep it out um, and focus on contracting the muscle. But during prep mode, when we're we're getting ready for a show, it's, it's typically higher reps okay. and drop sets and just a combination of some heavy weights, too. I, I always like to switch it up. Awesome. We had a question from Angel R. Talk over here, guys, about, um, uh, you know, basically when you're prepping and dieting or cutting, you know, and you're on those restricted diets, how does your mood, how is your mood affected? Like, how do you guys feel? Do you guys feel edgy a bit? Like, what happens? You know? I, I mean, you can go first, boss. Okay. Out of, out of everyone in the house, I think my mom and I are super, super, super emotional when we get to prepping. So it's totally, totally normal. Um, I mean, anybody, okay, so it's like taking a child to a birthday party and saying they can't eat the cake with everybody else, but every day of your life for eight weeks, <laughs> so of course, you're going to get upset. So it's, it's extremely normal. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's uh, my family, personally, they feel the wrath more than, you know, people around me. I try and act normal in, in public because, I mean, you're doing it to yourself, ultimately. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to be, an, a, you know, an asshole to somebody else because, you're dieting or you put yourself in this position, you gotta uh, try and love the process that you're actually doing. So most of the time, you know, my family feels most of the wrath. Let's be honest, there's times where I'll go to the gym together and we're in the car, I mean, we're killing each other, screaming and yelling. And, yeah. You know what, like you took the last chicken breast yesterday, you gotta cook, we're going yeah. on and then we step foot in the gym and that's like, all right, get yourself together, you guys. <laughs> You put your smile on, you just keep moving, right? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there will be times where we'll we'll work out, uh, you know, when we're mad at each other. We won't talk the whole time. We'll just uh, figure out what the next person's doing. You know, maybe we'll say, you know, what what exercise are we doing next? But there will be times where we'll just have our headphones in the whole time and not talk to each other the whole time. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to have workouts like that. Yeah. yeah. Makes total sense. What about like the temptations of food and weekends and, you know, maybe the alcohol here and there, like, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, being you guys are younger and, you know, and obviously you have friends that probably do those things. How do you deal with having friends or circles of influence like that and, and prepping in those conditions? Um, I mean, I have to, out of all of us, I think Tyler's the best on his diet. Honestly, I am a hermit. I will sit in a hole by myself for the last three weeks because I just can't take the temptation. Tyler can go to the movie theaters and be okay with smelling popcorn. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you haven't had it for so long. So yeah, yeah temptation's there. I don't know how he deals with it per se. Cause I don't like, I don't ever see him struggling that bad. Me, myself, again, I stick to myself for sure. Yeah, but her diet's different than mine. It's a lot harder. So it, it, we all have different diets, which is, is kind of funny. And sometimes we do different weight training. It depends on the day. But, I, I mean, for me personally, it, I, I love watching people eat bad food, which is a weird thing. Or I'll, or I'll smell yeah, them. Their favorite. Uh, and people think I'm, you know, putting myself in a bad situation. But, um, I mean, there will be a time where I'll get that food and be able to you know, overindulge on it a little bit. So. 
Awesome. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, obviously everyone's going to have their, you know, ups and downs and challenges when they're prepping, right? And it, that's one question I know that I get a lot from younger athletes is, you know, how do I deal with the weekends or how do I deal with my friends who are drinking alcohol and, you know, I'm 21 years old and, you know, being you guys are in your 20s, it's, uh, you know, appreciate you sharing that because it's, I'm sure you guys get questions like that as well. Um, yeah. you know, from your friends or how do you, you know, have friends? Actually, here's a question for you. Your circle of friends right now, has that changed in the last few years because of your preparation, your training, all that kind of stuff? For me, no. I, I mean, some of my friends are actually, you know, kind of into it and uh, some of them actually, you know, want to weigh, lose weight themselves. So uh, they know what I'm going through and they know that, you know, I'm passionate about it and I've done sports with most of my friends anyways. And mm -hmm. they, the same way, they've, you know, they've been playing hockey, soccer, um, everybody's got to go into this mode where you, you got to, you know, take it to the next level. So my group of friends, they've stayed pretty much the same uh, for me. They, they know what I'm going through. And when we do go and do stuff, I mean, we, we go and have fun. So we definitely make, make uh, sure of that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's good. Asha, what about you? Um, my friends have changed. Um, my first show, I, got, I lost some friends just because it was my first show and I didn't really know how to handle my emotions and stuff like that. I was super girly and I, you know, doing cardio, I thought cardio doing it like three times a week was crazy, right? <laughs> so, you know, it being my first show, yeah, I lost some friends. Um, now, I think that most of my friends understand. They they know, they get it. They They refer to it to me as two different people. Prepping mm -hmm. Basha and normal Basha. So mm -hmm. they get it. And if they're your friends, they'll understand regardless. So, yeah. And I mean, you totally agree. What's that? Usually the closer friends, they, they really understand. And I mean, um, they, my friends, they actually know, you know not to, to bother me in the last couple of weeks. They, they just leave me alone. They get it. <laughs> yeah. Now, how about your nutrition? So, give us an idea of, you know, in your prep mode. Are you finding that, uh, like, are you guys on a very, like, uh, like how strict are you? Give, give, some, give us an example of your, you know, your eating program in the last month. Not, not like, detail to detail, but uh, are you on really low carbs, high protein, fat intake, water intake? Where is that at? Low, like, uh, usually six to eight liters of water a day. Uh -huh. I find that that's more, you know, typical for most bodybuilders, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the, the water changes, you know, closer to show, but. For us, the carbs for me and my dad is a little different than what my sister and mom would have. Me and my dad, you know, we, we have uh, a medium amount of carbs before our show, and then obviously we, we do our, our carb addiction. So um, definitely it, it changes almost week to week depending on how we look. Our, our trip will change it. And yeah, I, yeah, six liters of water, yeah, six to eight. Depends on the day. Sometimes you can't get it all in. So, yeah, awesome. How about you, Bash? Uh, Bash, give us an example of what you uh, your program. Um, I'm really carb sensitive. So, yeah. Um, I just take it out completely. Okay. Okay. No carbs. No carbs at all. I just. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm like a walking zombie. I don't know. I just. I, <laughs> The same thing all the time. I have my chicken, my veggies. Um, that's it. It's simple. It's like the basic bodybuilder's diet. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course. Like, yours is different because you can't have carbs. But me and my dad's, it's it's definitely a lot different than theirs. Uh, obviously, closer to the show, we we don't have um, you know foods that are high in sodium. So I mean, having you know like tilapia is is really good because it's really lean. I noticed that um, there was a question here from Preston Bailey actually regarding is that like four gallons uh, of water? Um, were you referring to four gallons of water or four liters of water? For me, oh, I was uh, I was referring to I think it's actually two gallons. We, yeah, we drink two, gallons. two gallons. So one gallon, one gallon in four liters, and then yeah, two gallons. Two gallons. Awesome. Yeah. They give you a I think Preston got his answer there, so it's perfect. Uh, I see one too as well. There's a uh, let me see here. We have the there's a question about what do you think about waist training? I'll let kind of um, please explain what that actually that question means a bit further in your uh, 
in the message box on the side, and we'll definitely ask Tyler and Basha on that. Awesome. Yeah. So as Gar Oh yeah, what do you think about waist training? Yeah, she she knows more than me. I mean, she she sells waist trainers actually, but yeah, actually, I own my own business. It's called Clipped and Wasted. Um, visit our website www.cliptonwasted.com. <laughs> Um, I, we love waist training. Um, our trainer, Pauline Nelson, introduced it to us. I was skeptical. Um, it works. It's absolutely amazing. I love it. I wear mine 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I believe in it. Firm, firm, firm believer. Well, it, yeah. And somebody said, does it, you know, move your organs? I mean, it depends on how hard it, like some people have, you know, legit corsets where they, they tie it really, really tight. And, oh, no. you know, yeah, we, it's not like that. It, it actually, we just sweat more in, you know, our ab area, and, and I think it helps a lot. I've noticed a, a difference between waist training and not waist training on my abs between shows. I actually come in, and there's actually a, a fair amount of a difference. Yeah, the corsets, like as Tyler said, they, they're made with steel boning. Um, waist trainers aren't. It's not like metal boning. It's bendable still, so you can breathe. You can go about your day-to-day -day business. It's not gonna kill you. <laughs> okay, what exactly is it? Because I actually have, I'm gonna, I'm totally have no idea. Um, <laughs> when when it was mentioned waist training, I'm like, what is that? Mm -hmm. So, what exactly is it, guys? What it basically does is tighten your core, and after wearing it time and time again, you know, it's 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 training your waist to give you more of the hourglass figure. I know me myself in the fitness industry, having for females, males too, but it's. You look up for the V taper, the X factor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of the times. And some girls aren't, you know, made with that. I know mm -hmm. I'm not at all. I have a really like boxy figure. So what it's done for me is really gave me the V taper by bringing in my waist, my waistline all together, mm -hmm. tightening it. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. I guess the person said she's she's seen uh, you know damage by waist training, but those are the people that are are usually wearing the actual corsets that are. You know, you know, back in the day where they, the, yeah. the ladies would time on really, really tight. Uh, those are usually the ones that would uh, actually, or actually hurt you. So, gotcha. There is a question here as well. I see. I have anxiety and don't drink coffee or caffeine because I don't like the uh, uh, the feeling, the unpretty feeling. Is there any pre-workout that I can use that won't do that for me? What well, do you guys use? There, I mean, there is pre pre workouts with uh, without caffeine and all that stuff. With more natural pre workouts. I mean, I I think they don't do too too much. What I usually do is have good carbs before I go to the gym and fuel my body like like that, or you know, just take a nap or something. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get by not having pre workout because you're so tired after work or whatnot. But uh, fueling yourself with you know good carbs is is always good and BCAs. Mm -hmm. Gosh, what about you? Um, I like that caffeine feeling. I am so sorry you can't do it because, you know, the more giddy I can get in the gym, the motivation, the better for me. Um, I guess what I would say if you're not really into that feeling, I know my dad's very sensitive when it comes to pre-workouts and stuff like that. So if there is something that we're able to take, he'll take half of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. you can try that at I'm not sure. <laughs> I have one suggestion. Uh, one product that I use actually, because I, I go off caffeine for like uh, for for pre workouts once in a while to give my body a break. Um, yeah. There's probably more out there, but the one I use that I, I really like is the Opus from Magnum. Um, so to, uh, the question here on the side is: there's no caffeine in that product, but it actually gives a lot of vitamin in the product, so it gives you that feeling of um, the pump feeling when you're training, just minus all thermogenics. So. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people, uh, when they they actually do take the pre workout, some of them have niacin in them, which mm -hmm. you know, kind of icky and you know that feeling. I I think that's you know one of the feelings that kind of uh, annoys people, but it, it actually goes away after a while. So awesome! We have quite the quite the amount of people actually on the line here, eh, Tyler, from uh, our last interview. Oh, <laughs> There's I know, forty yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's awesome. So uh, thanks for your compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, good stuff, guys. So now what about, I guess, right, right now, like as far as uh, mindset is concerned, your mental preparational strategies, um, what do you guys use for daily mental training, daily mental strategies to keep focused, to get yourself, you know, going for the day to keep positive? 
anything that you guys do in the course of your day? Um, for me, myself, not every day is a good day. Like, I'm a girl, and I, I don't want to blame it on just being a girl, but we have our bad days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, some days you wake up and you're like, I look super, super big, and you're not motivated, and you know, things like that. But um, for me, I have a coffee, I listen to music, um, I will watch motivational videos. Um, you know, sometimes when I'm in the gym, I'll say it, I actually watch my trainer, Pauline Nelson, like her YouTube clips, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it just makes me want to keep going. Um, what about you, Ty? Uh, for me, <clears throat> I mean, motivation wise, I mean, I, I, I want to be the best in the world this, this next upcoming year. So, you know, every time I, you know, do a rep or, or anything like that, I'm always, you know, thinking uh, towards the next goal. And I kind of look at my body as a, you know, like a canvas of a, of a painter. You got to kind of work on on things that you, you you need to i mean when i'm working out i'm always looking at myself seeing if everything's you know proportioned you know some people would think it's arrogant but it's different when you're trying to you know make everything proportioned and whatnot so i, I usually do that and you know watching workout videos of, of ronnie coleman and yeah. guys like that. those are i always i always love to hear them say yeah buddy and uh you know, like, hey, it's, it's kind of funny that's awesome. Who who kind of inspires you, Bash, as far as uh, a, a girl from a girl perspective or a female perspective? Do you have any inspiring mentors or influencers? Um, right now, I, I think it's myself, and I don't mean to be cocky. I, I don't please don't take it the wrong way. When I first started um, this whole fitness journey, I did look up to like literally anybody that did a show. <laughs> I didn't care who you were, but if you got on that stage, like I wanted to be just like you. But I think you get to a point where um, your people that you used to look up to, you realize that you can be just like them. So instead mm -hmm. of looking at their picture and being like, wow, you look at yourself and you're like, wow, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you want to beat that. So I think a lot of the time I am my own motivation. Um, my mom, she drives me a lot. Uh, my trainer, my little brother, like when you see him in the gym, giving it like you have to work that much harder <laughs> um my dad i guess everyone my entire family like they're they're motivators but when it comes to idols and people i look up to like i want to be just like that it's myself like, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely good when you're in a family like ours Perfect. Uh, yeah. i mean you, you don't mess up on your meal plan or or mess up on your workouts because somebody's gonna say something Oh, oh! <laughs> Everyone's accountable. At my house, you'll, you you get talked about. <laughs> <laughs> it's unusual. Eh? It's like, what's going on Sunday? Are you guys are going through a leg workout? Yeah. So here's a question that came up about nice and and also um, this is great because it's leading into our you know the drug the drug free uh, bodybuilding and and fitness and figure that we do that we, you guys all do and that are pros in. So do you mind just answering, does niacin, uh, is it bad for you? And will it, will it actually make you fall or fail a, uh, a drug test? Uh, no, no, actually niacin, I'm pretty, sure. uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive that I used to actually use for heart patients. So, I mean, people do it before they go on stage to, you know, you know, make their, you know, vascularity come out and whatnot. I mean, if, if you think all the time, it would be bad. Uh, other than that, I don't think it's too bad, but... I, I know people who take that so they don't fail a drug test. I mean, it does make you, you know, uh, really calm. <laughs> makes you really, really calm. So if you, if you take that, I mean, it, I, don't, I honestly don't know about that. Because, I, mean, I, yeah. I mean, we don't have any problems, you know, failing a drug test. So we, we don't have to worry, you know, worry about that or, you know, search stuff like that. Well, and for that question, just so there's, there's clarity, is, is Tyler is exactly right. And the other thing with drug tests, just so everyone knows, an INBF Canada or WNBF, is we have a polygraph test that every athlete must uh, go through and pass, as well as the overall winners must also do a urine test as well for uh, for drug use. And if and basically no pro card is awarded until the urine test comes back and it's been a pass. So the only really things in the market right now that would, you know, basically make you fail a drug test would be ephedrine, mm -hmm. geranium. Uh, geranium is a three-month uh, before show date ban. Ephedrine is a six-month before date show ban. 
and then any sort of pearl hormone, which right now there's not many left in the market anymore because they're pretty much all gone. Unless you guys know of any pearl hormones that are still out there that you know um, that I haven't even heard of yet. Yeah, no, I haven't really heard of any either. No. There you go. So the other question that came about, you know, the basically the, the soreness that comes from training at the gym, um, basically that's really, you know, basically BCAs and protein would be catalysts. Would you guys agree with that is the most important way to really improve your, your muscle soreness post training? Yeah, BCAs uh, I think would probably be the most important, you know, with uh, the, the protein synthesis and the actual muscle, muscle building process. A protein, I, I mean, it's really, really important to get that in. I think I find that a lot of people are always worried about getting that protein shake in after a workout. And they, window. They, yeah, they they don't worry about <laughs> you know the rest of the the actual day itself. They don't get their protein in for the rest of the day, and I'm I'm like, what? Well, what's the point of even getting it in at the you know the right after the workout? I mean, protein synthesis lasts longer than thirteen you know uh, thirty minutes. It's yeah. it's actually about twenty four to forty eight hours. So I mean, if you're working out seventy or seven days a week. I mean, it's always, you know, it's always going. Do you agree with that, Basha? Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a smart kid. I like how you're, you're totally. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually interesting. So what you're saying is that this is all information that's, that's a little bit new to me. I love learning. So um, you were saying, Tyler, that actually the protein is actually is around is around 24 hours post training. Yeah, I, is that or did you say 12 yeah, hours? Yeah, I'm, I'm almost positive about that. I mean, it's not as high as what it would be after your workout, but it's really not far off of what the the difference would be. You know, uh, two to three hours after your workout. So, uh, I mean, that's why I always focus on actually trying to get my protein in for the day instead of you know right right after my workout. Obviously, I do that because as a natural, you got to do whatever you can to actually, you know, progress. So um, doing that would be one of the best options. Awesome. So going back to you guys and your training and, you know, what you guys are doing, um, each of you, I'd like to give you, or I'd like to kind of share with the viewers and the listeners is a lesson, like your most important lesson or um, tip that you want to give as pros, because you're both pros in natu a natural uh, federation that is totally natural and you've been natural all your life and you know you're you're 26 you're 22 tyler so uh what's a lesson or tip you want to pass on well for me it's uh, you know you see a lot of these guys in the posters and whatnot uh, i mean it's totally achievable you just gotta i mean you got you can't worry about anybody else other than yourself and you gotta have confidence in, in what you're doing and uh knowing you're you're making progress every day and you got to progress towards the goal that you actually want to, you know, uh, get to. So you got to have confidence in one. And I think your, your webcam is actually off right now. I, I'm not sure if that's. Uh, My webcam actually is oh, off. Oh, okay. I thought it was like a problem or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on. Actually, my, my sound's pretty good. So can you guys see me yeah, right I now? See, yeah. Oh, I great. Yeah. So I mean, confidence and, you know, worrying about yourself ultimately in the end, I mean, that's your biggest competition in the end. You gotta really worry about yourself, and you know, not worrying about getting first. You gotta worry about making the best self of you know, best version of yourself. Yeah, love Good it. Job. Yes. Okay. All right, Bash. What about you? <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I guess all I can really say is, you know, don't give up. I've done how yeah. many shows it take me to get here. Ugh, show upon show. I mean, my first three shows, I felt like I showed out a better placing, but that's just, you know what I mean? You, you, you always want to do better than you did your last show. So when you yeah. go on stage and do worse than you did your last show, it's kind of like I'm trekking backwards. But I mean, you need to know that it's, you can do it. If you see it, you can do it. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that hard. It, it all comes down to believing in yourself and you, you have to have a good support system. You know, surround mm -hmm. yourself with people that, you know, find interest in the sport. Um, sometimes it's hard to find, you know, friends in, in the fitness industry because everyone's against each other. And I mean, we really don't have to be, we don't have to be. I mean, I might go against you on stage, but we could train together. You know what I mean? It's, it's not that serious. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like the camaraderie is, is there like it used to be back in the day. Like I, yeah. I remember my parents used to tell me about our, our gym back in, 
Uh, you know, 10, 15 years ago, she said everybody was always working out together. Um, everybody was trying to improve together. The, they had a squat club on Sundays. And it's just stuff like that where, you know, you don't see that often. You know, everybody's, you know, er all your close friends, they, they don't want to see you su su succeed as much as, uh, you know, people know. that aren't around you. So yeah. that makes complete sense. You know, and as far as, uh, you know, like you said, confidence and, you know, and really ensuring that, uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the role model thing is very important too and everything, right? So um, I guess going into this new year, guys, right now it's January. What What is an off, like right now is off season for you guys right now, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When is your next show planned? Do you guys have an idea? For me, it, I, I want it to be around September. Okay. Would yeah. probably be you know best for me maybe one in the summer i'm not too sure i want to do one in the summer because i want to look good throughout yeah. the summer <laughs> maybe <hold on. laughs> but so, i want to prep in the summer because i need it <laughs> yeah you know bulking during the the summertime there's no there's no way that's gonna be there's out. no sexy way to do it like you just can't be <laughs> bulking in the summer <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm already getting sick of it i don't like looking at myself in the mirror yeah. i can't Selfies because my cheeks are so fat. No. You will never see me on Instagram taking a fitness picture until I'm prepping again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, what's the big difference for you guys? Like for, between your prep and your off season, is there a big difference like in how your body is, your weight, your how you feel, your nutrition, everything? Like what is the difference for you well, guys? I mean, I, I went from, <laughs> from 5 <laughs> to 210. So there's a big difference there. So, I mean, when you're <laughs> – but like the week right after show, me doing pull ups was like near impossible. Like I'm doing pull ups and I'm I'm totally struggling. I can hardly do a push up, hardly do dips, and I mean that's part of my a big part of my program is doing that stuff. So it was kind of funny that way. And I mean obviously the diet's not as uh, as strict, so kind of funny. <laughs> How about you, Bash? How about you? <laughs> <laughs> what's my weight like right now? No, like, what's the difference for you between on season and off season? And, and you know, like, do you find that does your does your body like change a lot? Like, I get that question a lot. And it's really good to hear from other natural athletes. You know, how much does your body change between you finishing a competition and say, you know, now is uh, two and a half months after Worlds? Um, your body does change a lot, and I mean, anybody that sorry, my TV just went on. <laughs> And anybody that competes really knows that it's like a mind like mess up because you go from absolutely shredded to, you know, you have fat in places you never had fat before. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> body wise, uh, I guess. So I'll start from like after the show, when I got home from the show, um, a week out, like a week post show, I felt amazing. Like I felt great because I didn't have those awesome. carbs that, you know, Tyler would have had and my dad had. So they felt you know, sluggish, mm -hmm. but you know, I had carbs and I ate well and I, I felt great. Um, two months down the road, I feel, I feel pretty good. Um, body wise, I'm not happy with what I look like because who would want to not be shredded? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I guess that's my, my weight right now is at 145 and I was like 115 on stage. So, you know, <laughs> there's a big difference. Yeah. I think somebody actually asked. Uh, that's also weight. Yeah, yeah, a lot of water weight. I mean, if we were to start dieting, you know, like hardcore today, we could probably lose, you know, from ten to twenty pounds, just really easy. So, I mean, it, um, big difference. I see someone ask, you know, why don't I just stay fit? Like, you're, it's just not possible. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean you have to be normal and you have to enjoy, you know, the sport, you have to enjoy going to the gym or it becomes repetitive and you don't like it. So mm -hmm. if I could diet year round, like prep diet and stay that lean and stay that strict, I most definitely would. But, you know, health wise, you need to bounce back. Your body needs that because you're not your healthiest when you're in show condition. And I mean, it's definitely harder to, could you to wait in the late Could you guys both define that? I know that question comes up, you know, as far as defining what fit really means, I guess, uh, not in competition mode, but even like in, you know, for example, your mode right now, 
Um, is that around, you know, 10%, 12%, 13%? Is that still like seeing your abdominals? You know, because you can still obviously be in the offseason and still kind of see your abdominals, you know, and still, you know, to the average person, that's actually still pretty fit. You know what right. I mean? So, uh, yeah. For us, we, we actually say, you know, we're fat and whatnot. I mean, we're just, we're just playing around, but to, I guess the normal, the normal person, we would probably just be normal right now. And I mean, we try and keep our waistline in, in check, I guess. We want to see a little bit of ab mm -hmm. definition, but uh, for us, it's just not, it's not possible for us because we're not taking, you know, performance enhancing drugs to actually help us being like, the, you know, these models in the, the magazines. Yeah. A lot of them, I mean, they are, they're all, I mean, 90% of them are using stuff. So it's kind of hard to actually stay like that unless it's your job and you're making a lot of money doing it. I mean, if you paid me like ten thousand dollars a picture, I will. I would eat fish <laughs> and veggies for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Bash, it, look, it looks like uh, you have um, uh, someone here on our guest list on the side there that. Uh, is asking some questions. You know, maybe it's best if if she reaches out to you on Facebook or something like that. She's got some pretty good questions for you. And uh, um, and you're, do you mind if yeah. uh, I say yeah. that or not? Okay, great. So, do you mind just mentioning your full name so she can actually reach out to you on Facebook? Um, me. Yes, um, yeah, for this girl is, here. Yeah. My name is Basha. So right there, you see it. B A S I A. You can just. Oh yeah, we can just type it out. Wow. Sorry. Good job, Tyler. Um, and then she could just copy and paste it and, and whatnot. Oh, you use Twitter? Okay. Here you go. Awesome. Perfect. There you go. Great. And yeah, basically for that question is uh no I what is what is L I have no idea what LG is. Is that Instagram? Yeah, I use um, Instagram. Oh yeah. What LG yeah. Is. yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So Instagram. And you're on Instagram as well, which is great. Yeah. So awesome. You guys are on uh, on audio right now, but I can still. Can you hear me? Can you still? You guys still hear me? I can okay? still hear you. Yeah. There you are. Beautiful. So, you guys have anything else you want to add? Any tips? I, and I'm going to put the note in the side here. Anybody who's listening, you want us to ask them one more question? Please write your question on the right hand side of the screen. We'll do one more for each um, of them. And uh, I guess with your guys' angle. Do you guys want to share anything more with the interview that you haven't shared yet? I mean, for me, it's, uh, I mean, bodybuilding starts from somewhere. I, for me, I started from track and field, hockey. I mean, you don't have to be done sports uh, for your whole life. I mean, there's still stuff you can do. And that's why I actually got into bodybuilding. And I mean, it, it, it's fun seeing your body change and do that. It, I mean, you can still be normal when you do it, too. It's just... You gotta be. You gotta do it in moderation. So, uh, I mean, if I if I had one, you know, last thing to say is just uh, have confidence in yourself, and you, and it won't happen overnight. You just gotta just be consistent and and keep going. Yeah, I totally agree. Awesome. Tyler. Good lesson. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, it starts and finishes with you, right? So why not treat your body? You only have one body. Treat it right. And I mean, this is the best sport to get into if you really want. To. If your goal is to be healthy for the rest of your life, why not get on stage and you know push yourself and do a couple of shows? Mm -hmm. Love it. Just stay, just stay on here, guys. I'm going to close the show off, but just please stay on the uh, video till the till I have. I just think yeah. I want to ask you guys after this. This thing's recording, so all right, guys. So there you have it. We have Tyler and Basha. Ba Bosh, oh my gosh, I'm so bad with names. Yeah, Basha. Uh, thank you so much, dear. That's fantastic. We have two all-star athletes here, natural athletes, going to the world championships this year at the WNBF Worlds in LA. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Actually, just, just make a note, Tyler. Um, you're on Instagram and, and Facebook, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah, I, can, uh, I mean, I can just put uh, my IG and, and whatnot. Fantastic. Too, Basha did too, which is great. Fantastic. Pull them, guys. They're young superstars. Give them a couple more years. They're going to be all over the place. They already are. So that's the end. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining the show and really appreciate you guys' time. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, it, was, it was really nice to, uh, being on here again. It was definitely fun. Yeah, thanks for having us. You're getting better last time. <laughs> awesome, guys. Thank you. Yep. See ya.